Hello everyone, we are back at the Nations Cup with a really awesome game from round 7. It's Pentala Hari Krishna versus Jorge Kori and it features the Sveshnikov uh, and uh, it, well this game will, will definitely show us uh, that it's not an easy opening to play. Uh, I myself uh, started studying it uh, a few days ago and it's it's really interesting. It uh, gives Black a lot of opportunities to, to fight for, for, for from, from the start. Uh, but it can also be very dangerous, uh, which uh, which may uh, which we may uh, witness here. So without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Hare Krishna uh, opens with e4. Sorry about that. Uh, and we have c5, the Sicilian defense. Uh, we have knight to f3, knight to c6, and now d4. So just captures, captures, and now e5. Uh, the, immediately uh, going for that uh, knight, so not not uh, waiting for knight f6, knight c3, and then e5. So basically, uh, the the immediate e5. So it's a bit different from the Sveshnikov. Uh, knight to b5 right away, or maybe this is also called the Sveshnikov. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think it is. I think you first have to develop the knights, but it is very interesting. Uh, we have d6, uh, and now comes knight one to c3. Uh, we have a6, uh, kicking the knight back, and now after knight a3, uh, pawn back, uh, pawn uh, is ex expanded to b5, threatening b4 to win one of the knights. So everything the same as in the Sveshnikov, or, or the Lascar Sicilian, or the, the Pelican, if you remember it that way. So knight to d5, and now knight to f6. So by, by not uh, going directly into it, maybe it's a way of uh, throwing black off guard, if you know that black is a Sveshnikov player. Uh, we have bishop to g5 now, pinning the knight, and bishop to e7 now, uh, now just... Uh uh, removing the pin, we have bishop captures on f6, and although sometimes you can capture with the g pawn, here bishop captures on f6, uh, and uh, now comes c4. So basically, we've just transposed into the normal Sveshnikov. Uh, we have b4 now, challenging the knight, knight to c2, and now rook to b8. You could also defend it with a5, but here uh, Jorge Cori goes for uh, b rook to b8. Uh, we have b3 now and a5, uh, and here white goes for g3. Uh, now the idea is to, to think to the bishop castle, and then you can start pushing f4, h4, or whatever you need. Uh, we have castles by Cory, and now bishop to g2, just preparing to, to castle. Uh, and here uh, we have g6, with the idea of maybe shifting the bishop over to g7, maybe playing f5 in the future. Uh, maybe maybe bishop to g5 could also be an idea, not allowing this trade, so maybe then g6, but it does seem like, like it's a bit slow. But you do prevent f4 for, for the moment, at least. Uh, but okay, we have g6 here, and here uh, there is one game in the database where queen to d3 was played, but here we have knight captures on f6 with check, and it is as of move 16 that we have a completely new game. So queen captures on f6, and now we have castles, uh, so f4 will, will come nicely in the future. Queen back to e7, you don't work your, want your queen on the same file, and maybe black is also preparing f5, but also you need to keep an eye on your d6 pawn. So here it doesn't seem like black got all that. Uh, an impressive of a version of the Sveshnikov since he just uh, he will just be stuck guarding the, the d6 pawn pretty much forever. Uh, but okay, queen e2 and now bishop to e6. Black continues developing. We have rook 8 to d1 and now f6, strengthening the center. Uh, but again, you, you've played f6. Uh, you, you better have a very good reason for it. So rook to d3. Hare Krishna will now double up on the d file, put pressure on the backwards d6 pawn, which is black's main weakness. And now knight to d8, preparing to shift the knight over to b7 to add another defender to the pawn. And now just rook f to d1. We have knight to b7, defending it, and now uh, h4. White starts expanding on the king side. Uh, we have rook f to d8, adding another defender. Uh, and now queen to d2. Now maybe the queen has some ideas of infiltrating on the, on the king side. Maybe a3 will be an idea in the future going after the b4 pawn. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we have king to g7, preventing queen to h6, and now knight to e3. And now from e3, the knight can uh, the, the can come to d5, or maybe if you can uh, get uh, f4, f5, and maybe the knight can come to g4, then you put some uh, pressure uh, on h6 again. Uh, so black just goes rook to d7, prepares to double up on the d file, so the knight can once again be activated, maybe via knight to c5. Uh, and uh, Hare Krishna goes for f4, uh, just... Uh, 
crashing through and it's not easy for black to reply. For example, uh, you could go for something like captures and then after white recaptures go king h8. So if white will be persistent with pushing f5, maybe you can also get the g file. Uh, so you will somehow uh, activate your rooks. However, after this f4 move, we have rook b to d8 by Cory, and now uh, we have f5 by Hare Krishna. And it's, uh, it's an extremely difficult position for black. So your bishop is under attack. You could capture it uh, and after pawn captures, then uh, move back with the bishop. But uh, Corey decides to do it right away. And now we have f captures on g6. We have h captures on g6. And now comes knight to g4. So the knight finds its way uh, to, to, d, uh, to g4. Uh, no, not much point in going to d5. Black will be very happy to just uh, remove that knight as his bishop isn't all that impressive. Uh, and here uh, you are already threatening to jump in with the queen, with queen to h6. So here, uh, again, it's not easy to find a way. Whatever you play, let's say you move the king or something to make way for the queen to, to block a queen h6 check. Uh, white will just go rook here and there's no, there's no uh, sorry, not here, <laughs> maybe rook to f3, then rook to f1. Go after this pawn, and it's gonna be it's gonna be very difficult uh, to to defend it. For example, if rook to f8, you're just gonna go queen to h6 check, and now uh, not uh, not really sure what you, you'll do. If you block with the queen, then the rook falls, so not really an option. So you'd have to block with the bishop, and after bishop to uh, to h7, now uh, we we would get pretty much uh, the position that we got into the game. So. Point is, black went bishop to h7 first. Uh, I'm not gonna finish that line since it's. Uh, I, I think it's pretty much the same line we <laughs> we got into the, in the game. Uh, so here, rook to f3, going after the f6 pawn, and here rook to f8, defending it. So it is actually what happened in the game. Uh, so here, uh, Hare Krishna went queen to h6 check. We have king to h8, and now white is completely lost. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolutely crushing move for, for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this very, very uh, sneaky tactic. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's night captures on e5. Uh, and it was in this position on move 31 that Jorge Cori resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Point is, if you accept the, the knight, for example, with the f-pawn, then just rook captures on f8. And the king has nowhere to go, it's game over. Uh, you cannot block with the bishop as it's pinned, so you'd have to give up your queen here, and that's just that. Uh, uh, on the other hand, if you capture with this pawn, then just rook captures on d7. If you move the queen, it's queen checkmate here, or here, it doesn't really matter. And if you capture, then the rook on f8 is no longer defended, just queen captures with check, bishop g8, and now you can pretty much do anything. Captures with check, blocks, and now you either trade and play a, a much better endgame, or you can even keep the queens on the board, and you're just up the exchange in a completely winning position. Black's position is completely uh, uh, this destroyed. So, uh, lastly, but not leastly, uh, you could capture with the queen, but then the rook is just uh, immediately uh, free for grabs, which means that, uh, okay, maybe you can still play it, but not really. After the bishop blocks, you're going to go queen captures on f6, and again, it's uh, just a much better endgame. White is up uh, the exchange, and, uh, well, yeah, all, all of these pawns are, are completely weak. You're just going to uh, win the game easily. So, yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, on move 31, uh, Corey resigned and uh, a great victory for Pentala Hare Krishna. And pro we're probably going to check out one more game from round 7 or 8 tomorrow and then we're going to discuss the standings. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I uh, I really got interested in this whole Sveshnikov uh, business and uh, was uh, really studying it for the past two days. But it seems like uh, when you play against an extremely strong player, uh, it's not all that easy to play. But that's the case with everything. So uh, if any of you were also considering, uh, you know, maybe learning a bit about the Sveshnikov, maybe don't get discouraged by this... Uh, uh, by this e uh, seemingly easy win uh, from white as it is uh, it is quite uh, quite difficult to learn uh, but it does offer you uh, a lot of, a lot of fight uh, so may maybe you you'll find it interesting and maybe when i'm done uh, with uh, d depending on how much i I'm, I'm going to learn about it maybe i can make a, li a little video about it to, to maybe uh, shed some uh, you know ideas about it if you guys will be interested uh, but yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Oliver Schoisval, uh, Thomas Connors, Dwight Barkley, uh, Abdul, Abdul Aziz uh, Almasod, uh, and uh, Furkat Rahimov for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the 
uh, of the Nations Cup and whatever else I, I manage the time for. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Friday.